All right, let's talk about gay puri. Back from a time when the word gay meant something else. So uh, this is an animated movie by uh, Chuck Jones. Um, it stars Judy Garland as the uh, lovely musette. Um, and it also has uh, Robert Goulet as uh, the love it, love interest. I can't I can't even think of Robert Goulet without thinking of the Will Ferrell impression. Um, that's pretty much all I know him for is the Will Ferrell impression. I'm sorry. I know I'm uncultured American. Yeah, that was a bad French accent. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and let me see. Uh, Red buttons voices his uh, little friend. Uh, I forget his name, but uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> let me see, and then we got, uh, some, we got, uh, Paul Freeze voicing, uh, the villain, uh, Meowrys, and, you know, there's also, uh, you know, his sister, who's kind of like a secondary antagonist, who kind of, like, refor reforms herself by the end, um, and, yeah, you also hear uh, Mel Blanc in a couple roles. So, yeah. So, yeah, two voice acting titans in this movie. All it's missing is June Ferre, and we got the whole uh, holy trinity of uh, old-school voice acting legends. Um, but, uh, yeah, this was a fun little movie. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, let me see... Uh, it's got some nice little uh, musical numbers, um, very much helped by uh, the uh, great singing by Judy Garland and Robert Goulet. Obviously, both of those people are very uh, <coughs> seasoned musical singers. Um, and let me see, Paul Fries puts on a fun performance as the villain. I think, uh, yeah, the villain's a lot of fun. Um, I think red, the Red Buttons character is a little annoying. Just a little. Um, but I don't know, he's, he's not a bad character. He's, I guess he's kind of like the, uh, comic relief sidekick. Um, and yeah, there's also these, uh, hench cats. Not hench men, but hench cats of the villain, and, you know, they're like these, uh, shadowy, um, they kind of look like Siamese cats, but, yeah, they're like these, uh, shadowy black cats, yeah, I do love, like, the animation with them, <laughs> honestly, they might be my favorite characters of the whole movie, I mean, that's not to say there aren't some other memorable characters, like, uh, yeah, Meowrys, um, but yeah, I just, yeah, I think they have a lot of uh, fun little gags with, like, their uh, physics and, you know, just the fact that, you know, they're just these uh, shadowy cats with, you know, glowing eyes. Um, oh, yeah, and, uh, you know, there's a, you know, Chuck, um, the, uh, you know, Chuck Jones, um, obviously, since he animated this movie, it's very, uh, it does have some Looney Tunes-like, uh, animations in it. Um, yeah, the front animation, if you will, is good by, you know, it's, a uh, standard Chuck Jones. It's not, like, amazing or anything, but it's, uh, you know, it's got a lot of, uh, good visual gags and all that good Looney Tunes-like stuff. Um, but what really stands out about uh, the animation in this movie is, like, the backgrounds. Like, all of the backgrounds look like uh, paintings by famous artists. Like, uh, I, noticed, I noticed when uh, they use uh, the painting style of uh, Vincent Van Gogh, and, yeah, I noticed maybe some occasional Picasso and some other famous artists. Um, 
Yeah, you can tell they uh, poured a lot of love in this movie towards all the uh, big, you know, painters of like the late eight, 1800s, early 1900s. Um, <coughs> and yeah, it it's gorgeous to look at. Like, yeah, the sets look amazing. Um, there's this part where, uh, Meow Reese is, like, writing to this boss of his, apparently, who we never see. Um, you know, he's planning to, uh, mail, uh, Musette to, uh, this, uh, boss of his, or I guess he's, like, a client. You know, he's trying to mail her to him as, like, a a wife, if you will. Um, and he's talking about uh, all these uh, paintings of her done by all these famous artists. Um, it kind of goes on a little longer than it needs to. It uh, drags a bit, but it is uh, interesting to see all this information of all these painters and stuff. A bit, bit of education. I mean, it it drags, but at least you're learning something about uh, painters of the era that this takes place in. Um, <clears throat> I do think it does get a little draggy by the end. Um, but, but yeah, I think, uh, for the most part, it's a very satisfying experience. And yeah, I do like the art direction. Um, anything else to say about... Yeah, so, Beth, I guess I haven't really talked about the plot yet. It's about, uh... You know, uh, Musette, you know, she decides to go to Paris because she, kind of because she feels she'll be treated like a queen or something. <clears throat> she gets a little vain, so yeah, she uh, goes to Paris because she wants to, you know, be treated as the beauty that she is or something. And, <clears throat> you know, uh, she enjoys the town, but, you know, Miaris kind of takes her in and... I don't know, it's a bit of a complicated plot involving uh, mailing her to this client of his, but um, obviously the end goal is he makes a lot of money, so yeah, he, he does make it pretty clear that he likes money, which is kind of strange for a cat, but, uh, um, and yeah, uh, I don't really have a whole lot else to say that I can think of at the moment. Um, but yeah, overall, this was a very enjoyable movie, and uh, if you're interested, definitely give it a watch. I give it an 8 out of 10, and uh, I'll just leave it there for now. As usual, if there's anything else I need to bring up, I'll write it in the comments. So, yep, that's about it for now. Mash it and smash it, signing off.